Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over parts of the eye and the process of vision, how the eye takes in light and that is interpreted by your brain into sight, into vision. Let's go ahead and get started with the anatomy of the eye first. Parts of the eye. Here we go. So here's a fairly typical diagram that you'll find online showing uh, an outline of the major parts of the eye. And we're going to start on the outside of the eye and work our way in. So first of all, the outer protective layer of the eye is called the cornea. And so if dust lands or dirt or if you get something in your eye like an eyelash, the cornea will be irritated and, and your eye will produce tears which can wash away whatever the irritant might be. By the combination of, of you producing tears and blinking, it's the same thing as kind of like what your windshield wipers do on your car. It wipes away the dirt and takes away the irritant. So there's the cornea. The next part of the eye I want to mention is called the iris. This is the colorful part of the eye. This is the pretty part of the eye that's hazel or blue or green. And the iris is simply a muscle. And one thing that all muscles can do, whether it's a muscle in your eye, whether it's a muscle in your leg, muscles are designed to stretch and contract. And so you might know that the iris is a muscle and the iris can stretch and contract depending on how much light is visible. And so in a moment we're going to see what happens when the eye is exposed to light and when the eye is in a dimly lit room. We're going to come back to that in just a moment though. So there's the part again labeled the iris. The next part I want to mention is in the middle of the iris there's a hole. The hole in the middle of the iris is called the pupil. As the iris stretches and contracts, because the iris is a muscle, this hole gets bigger or smaller. So the hole will shrink in bright light and the hole will be uh, larger and open in dim light. Here's a couple pictures of what I'm referring to. In this picture you can see the black spot is the, uh, is the pupil. The white dot in the middle of the pupil, that's probably just the flash going off from the camera that was used to take this picture. So uh, in this picture you can see how the black area in the middle, the pupil, is fairly large. That because, that's because this person is in a dimly lit room. And when it's very poorly lit, if there's not a lot of light, the iris is going to stretch open the pupil. That way whatever light is in the room can hopefully enter your eye so you can see better. Well, Watch this. In a bright room, you can see the difference. The black hole, the pupil, is a lot smaller. I don't think this is the same person's eye. They're just two pictures that I found that I think show the point nicely. But you can see how, how much the, the pupil has shrunk because this person is in a bright room. There's probably a flashlight in the person's face. Uh, moving on, though, to the next part of the eye. So there's again the iris. The next part of the eye I want to mention is just behind the iris. It's called the lens. And as light enters the eye, the, the, the purpose of the lens is to focus. Focus light as it enters. Focus light onto the back of your eye, which we'll mention more in just a moment. The back of the eye is called the retina. So let's move on and continue backwards into the eye. So there I go, I've labeled the lens. Now as we continue to move back, we come to a fluid-filled sac called the vitreous. You might also hear it called the vitreous humor. It's a fluid-filled sac, mostly filled with water. And the vitreous is clear, and, and it has to be clear, because again, light has to pass through it. If the vitreous were all cloudy, your vision would be all cloudy. And one of the purposes of the vitru vitreous is it, it's because it's filled with this liquid, it, it has pressure to it. And it pushes against the lens and it helps hold the lens in place. It's not the only thing holding the lens in place, but it helps. So uh, because the vitreous is a fluid-filled sac, uh, again, it adds some of the pressure of the eye. Uh, let's keep moving to the back of the eye. 
So there I've labeled the vitreous. As we keep going back, we come to the retina. And the retina contains cells that are known as rods and cones. The reason they're called rods and cones is because that's their shape. There are cells that are shaped like rods. They detect light and dark. And there are cells that are shaped like cones. They detect colors. And so we have a combination of rod cells and cone cells to detect light, dark, and colors. And when light strikes the retina, it will produce the retina, the cells of the retina, the rods and cones, the photoreceptors. They will create what's called an electrical impulse. That electrical impulse is an electrical signal that will eventually go to the brain and the brain will turn, uh, turn that into an image. So I've just labeled the retina there. Uh, and the last part I want to mention at the back of the eye in this picture is called the optic nerve. So when the retina makes an impulse, the impulse will go up the optic nerve. And the impulse goes up the optic nerve and directly into the brain. The brain is receiving all kinds of electrical impulses. It's receiving, the brain is receiving impulses from your ears, turning that into sound. Your brain is receiving impulses from your nose, turning that into smell. Your brain is receiving impulses from your eyes, turning that into vision. Your brain is receiving impulses from your skin, turning that into our sense of touch. And uh, your brain is receiving impulses from your tongue, turning that into our sense of taste. So your brain has to make sense of the electrical impulses, but your optic nerve's job is to send that information to the brain. And so there's the optic nerve and all the parts. Go ahead and pause the video if you want to study these parts. Now I want to quickly go over the process of vision, the pathway that light travels. In the animation you see number one, light, a yellow beam of light is entering, passing through the cornea, passing through the pupil which is open right now. And what happens next is the lens, we mentioned earlier, the lens will focus light onto the back of the eye called the retina. The retina will then create an impulse, an electrical signal, and that's what that flashing uh, spiked shaped object is in the animation. The flashing object, that's the impulse. And then the last step is that impulse, step number four, that impulse travels up the optic nerve and into your brain, and your brain will determine what it is that you're seeing. So that's an overall view, or overall process of vision. Check out this wonderful, wonderful video on a cow eye dissection. So if you just click on the box, it'll take you to uh, another YouTube video of a cow eye dissection. Don't forget to come back here, though, and watch the rest of this video. Here's something kind of fun. Um, it, this is called the Stroop Effect, and it's just kind of a fun, silly way to kind of mess with your brain. So the directions say, when I remove that blue box, I want you to, from top to bottom, there's going to be about six or seven words. From top to bottom, read the word. Here we go, on the count of three, read the word from top to, root words from top to bottom. Here we go, three, two, one. Okay, that should have been pretty easy because the color of the, of the text is the exact same color as the actual word. But watch this. Try this one. This is a little fun. So same directions. When I remove the box from top to bottom, read the words as quickly as possible. Read the word. Here we, here we go. Read the words. Three, two, one. That was probably a little harder because the color of the text was different than the actual word. The, your brain kind of takes a moment to try to process what it is that you're seeing. You may have seen the word green, but it was typed in red text, and so you, you may have said gred, combination of green and red, and, and, and then all the way down the same thing. So here we go, we're kind of at the end of this video. This is kind of a, a, a quiz to see how well you remember. Go ahead and pause the video. Two part question here. Pause the video, try to answer number one, try to answer number two. I'm gonna go over the answer in three, two, one. So name the part of the eye that stretches and then identify it. I hope you chose E, the iris. The iris is the answer to number one. Letter E, the answer to number two. Here's another one. Same thing, pause the video, I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, 
1. So name the part of the eye that contains rod and cone cells and then identify it. I hope you chose the retina. Retina is the answer to number 1, letter F the answer to number 2. Here's another one. Pause the video uh, and try to answer number 1 and 2. I'm going to go over the answers in 3, 2, 1. So name the part of the eye that focuses light and then identify it. I hope for number 1 you said the lens and you identified it as letter B. B as in boy. Here's another one. Again, pause the video. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. So name the part of the eye that uh, uh, name the part that protects the eye and then identify it. I hope you chose for number one the cornea, which you identified as letter C. So here's the final question. Uh, uh, go ahead and pause the video and try to identify all of these parts, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Pause the video, try to identify all the parts. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. So for part A, I hope you called it the vitreous or the vitreous gel or the vitreous humor. For part B, I hope you called that the lens. For part C, I hope you called that the protective cornea. For part D, I hope you called that the pupil. For part E, I hope you chose the colorful, pretty part of the eye, called the iris. For part F, the rods and cones at the back of your eye, I hope you called that the retina. And for part G, that's the nerve that leads into the brain, that's called the optic nerve. So that's it. That's really the end of this video here. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you found this very helpful.